Apart from those individual additions to the SOP toolkit that I've shown in the last video, there are two major additions now available in SOPs in Houdini 18. And we've seen this happen with Vellum when SideFX decided to put simulation tools onto the SOP level, and that worked really, really well. I think what happened is they decided to do that with other simulation tools now as well. And while Vellum was geared mainly to anything soft body-ish, we now also get tools for rigid body simulation namely RBD bullet tools in SOPs. Let me demonstrate the very, very basic setup by dropping down a box, diving in there, and scaling this up to a size of maybe say four, like so, and then moving it up so it sits flush at the ground plane here. Next, and that is not an entirely new node, but it's been reworked and updated, it is the RBD material fracture. So what I wanna do is fracture this block here. RBD material fracture by default brings a few default setups with it. For example, I can choose if I want to have a fracture that's more like concrete, glass, or wood, or I can also set up my totally custom fracture, which we're gonna do later. Now let's just stick with concrete. And I'd like to increase the detail level on this a bit. So now we're running two fracture levels, first coarsely subdividing or fracturing up this box, and then at a second level, doing a bit smaller fractures. Let's add one more level just by clicking the plus symbol here. Now we've got a bit more fractures in here. Also. I'd like to have chipping, and chipping has been reworked. So in Houdini 18, this gives a bit more realistic behavior of those small chips that sit here within the creases. Also, let's add a bit of detail to this by checking edge detail, which is breaking up those edges here. And also when we scroll down here or maybe drag this down, let's also check interior detail. So this will break up or detail these interior edges of those individually fractured pieces. Let's drag this over. And as you see here, the RBD material fracture has three outputs here. One is the geometry, one are the constraints. So what RBD material fracture here is creating under the constraint tab is glue constraints. So these pieces hold together by default. And only if a certain force has been exerted on those individual pieces, they detach from the main geometry, they start breaking. Otherwise the whole thing would crumble immediately as we start the simulation. And this strength here is, well, maybe plausible for concrete, but for some of the simulations that we're gonna do, this is a bit high and we need to dial this in later. Mainly the primary strength and the chipping glue strength here. And the third output here is a proxy geometry. That means geometry that's containing less detail than this main geometry here, but which is easier to simulate because it's convex and has low detail. Now for the fun part, let's attach an RBD solver SOP here by hitting shift and enter. This will automatically wire up those three inputs to the first three inputs of this solver here. The other two inputs that we have are one for the collision geometry. So if I want colliders that interact with this here, I can pipe them in here, or a guided sim. And we're gonna talk about this later. And it's got four outputs, the geometry, constraints, proxy geometry, and simulation points. In here, the first thing I wanna set up is a ground plane on the ground tab here. So I'll just add a ground plane here, sitting at the zero Y position. And when I toggle real time and hit play, we can see not much happening. This is behaving as a concrete block that it should be. So maybe let's kind of mistreat this using a wrecking ball. So let's drop down a sphere, ghost this so we can see something, set the tools handles here, move it over there and go to frame one, alt click on the center here and let's animate this. So it moves until frame 24 here. Let's move this over here and maybe upwards a bit and alt click again to keyframe. So we've got this movement here. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's set the sphere's primitive type to polygon, as my RBD solver is expecting polygonal meshes. Let's dial up the frequency a bit so we have a bit finely subdivided mesh here and wire this in the fourth input, the collision geometry. Now, when we select the bullet solver, we can see this collision geometry brought in and visualized in this blue mesh here. So let's just hit play and simulate this. And you can see nothing's happening here. Although my animation is still ghosted and still running here, the collision geometry is not moving. Let's reset this and in the RBD board solver, under collisions, let's set the initial object type, which is the type that's being created here, from animated static object to deforming static object. And that takes care of this animation on the sphere actually being regarded by our board solver here and being taken into account. So let's re-simulate. And that just knocks over our whole pillar here. So also not what we'd expected. So I've been mentioning those constraints here in the RBD material fracture being a bit too high for most of my simulation purposes. So let's decrease them by a factor of 10 to 1000 on the primary strength and 500 on the glue chipping strength and re-simulate. 
and now we're getting somewhere. Still, some of those fractures here could happen, so I might be tempted to dial in those primary and uh, chipping loose strength a bit lower as well. Let's try again lowering them by a factor of 10. And although that might be a bit too low now, you get the idea.